This was Singapore just a few weeks ago after some particularly heavy rain. But the flooding could have been even worse without this, the Marina Barrage. It's one of the world's largest hydraulic dams, which protects the coast through a series of gates and pumps. It's also a major source of fresh drinking water and a beautiful park for locals. Most funding around the world goes towards climate mitigation. That's efforts to reduce carbon emissions through investing in things like renewables. But some cities are also focusing on climate adaptation, adjusting our lives and infrastructure to the impacts of climate change. Singapore has committed 74 billion US dollars to the task by the end of the century, and has even got its central bank involved. The city-state is also experimenting with unique solutions for heat waves, as well as planting lots of vegetation. It's changed the shape of its roofs and pumps cold water around buildings to keep them cool. But Singapore's not the only place trying to adapt to a new weather reality as the climate changes. We need to talk about Copenhagen too. In 2011, the Danish city was struck by a thousand-year cloudburst, a very sudden and intense storm. This caused several feet of flooding and almost a billion dollars worth of damage. Thus, the cloudburst management plan was born. It's a fairly low-tech solution, which includes a lot of green staping and wastewater management. But the city did find a way to turn roads into waterways if absolutely necessary. The truly creative part of cloudburst is its Funding. Copenhagen essentially invented a new water tax and a municipal credit fund to pay for it. So what do both of these cities have in common? Government involvement in adapting to climate change. So when the standards and regulation, enthusiasm and money will often follow. This is what we need to be demanding from our governments as climate impacts start to hit home.